Uh, so we say a very, very good morning. Uh, firstly to Sean. Sean, take a seat there for me. Welcome to the show. Thank Great you. to have you in studio with us. Good to be here. Thanks. Um, give us a little bit of an, a, a little bit of insight into what exactly um, you do at the Snake Park. Is it uh, a rescue centre? Is it a place for you to educate the public? My wife and I, in fact, uh, run a rehabilitation centre for reptiles. Um, so we do have a display area. People come in and have a look and see what the snakes in fact look like. It's good to identify these animals if you see them on the property. But we also work on a principle where people bring us injured animals. Uh, we're called to collect animals um, that are either straying onto somebody's property or become a nuisance or a threat perhaps to themselves or their pets. Um, we'll have comedians that come in uh, with injuries and we have a vet uh, in Fleshwick, Dr. John Oakley, who helps us um, on a regular basis, has been doing so for the last 15 years. It's fantastic that you do this because I think there's way too many individuals that just want to hit it with a spade. Mm, you know. uh, and I know my mother is also very much about conserving the uh, reptiles as well. Uh, in terms of um, with, with, with chameleons, she's, she's come across chameleons that are sprayed with doom and they blind these things. Oh, yep. And that's just kids having a laugh. Yep. Oh. You know, it's, 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 it's absolutely disgusting behavior. But... It, I suppose it also stems from ignorance, and that's why we've got you in the studio today. How important is it for us to conserve the, the snakes in the Western Cape? Is there a plentiful supply? I mean, uh, should we be worried? As areas develop um, and our population numbers grow, we find that there's more conflict. Now, we know that where there's large uh, sort of numbers of people, uh, there's an increase in the numbers of rodents, especially rats. Uh, this is food for snakes. Um, you know, we want to sort of handle things on a natural sort of principle and, and use all these green ideas. Um, you know, instead of using pesticides and, and things like that, rather um, conserve the snakes, protect them. They'll go in and do their job, eat all the rats, and we live a healthier, happier life. Mm. They are part of the cycle, aren't they? That's what they're there for. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So let's snakes, though. You could have you could have rescued anything in the entire world. Where does the love of snakes come from and reptiles and? I think oh, it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a passion. You know, it, it, it's the one animal that a lot of people are afraid of. And yes. As you previously mentioned, when I grew up, when I was a kid, yeah. the only good snake was a dead snake. Yes. Um, sure. You know, these animals uh, take, for instance, a mole snake. Uh, will eat the equivalent of about a million mice in its lifetime. Um, they're also starting to learn more about uh, the different uses of venom, the different components in venom, which yeah. could be used to actually, uh, it could knock diseases like Ebola. Yeah. It, could, it, it could be something that we could uh, use against uh, cancer. Yeah. Um, so our biggest enemy could become our biggest friend. Yeah, so interesting. And uh, Tracy is with you in studio. Tracy, I actually can't switch the on button on there. Can you press it? <laughs> Tracy, if you come to that microphone, what are these beautiful, beautiful snakes that you've, uh, you've just taken out of the box now and one of which I'm holding? Right, good morning, everybody. These are the ball pythons. They stem from West Africa, a place called Toga. Unfortunately for them, they are hunted. Yep. Okay. Because they're so beautiful. They're absolutely yeah. exquisite, aren't they? For the illegal pet trade, it's, it's uh, quite sad, yeah. yeah. And Look the reason you. why you couldn't switch that on button was because you have a snake in your hand. In both hands. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it's the first time that someone said that to him. Oh, the <laughs> Sandra, are they uh, are they uh, very uh, sensitive to to our touch? I mean, are they very aware of what what's happening they, here? They know exactly what's going on around them. Their senses are very different to ours. You notice he doesn't have ears. Mm. Um, his eyesight's very poor. In fact, that tongue sticking in and out. He's yeah. sensing what's going on around him. He's picking up little particles, as small as molecules, yeah. putting those onto the roof of the mouth. A little Jacobson's organ sends a message to his brain, and he feels vibrations. So, yeah. sense is very different to ours. So he could essentially, I think if there's a change in our energy, could they sense that? That's very interesting. Yes. What happens is because they rely on radiant heat uh, mm. similar to you know, the sort of energy that you get from the sun, yeah. uh, that kind of keeps them going. And um, there's an exchange of energy. You know, as you're holding that snake, he's cold-blooded. Yeah. So what happens, <clears throat> he's taking your heat, your energy, mm. that's like sweeties for him, uh, it makes <laughs> him feel good, and at the same time you're going to feel a bit cooler. So in summer, I, yeah, it's sort of built in, um, yeah. He is very cold. Is it a he? And calm. That is a small he. Um, that's, uh, he his name is Minnie Mo. And <laughs> on the left there, we've got Monty. Yes. And Monty is also male. Yes. yes. Okay. So, you know what 
dogs if you rescue wild dogs are obviously not very happy to be touched and the more you kind of pet them the more used to them. is it the same with snakes or are they always going to be the one thing about snakes is that they don't really become tame like cats and dogs. Yeah. So when you get home, he's not going to wag his tail and face the ball. But at the end of the day, they get used to handling. Okay. Um, they get used to the fact that they can trust people. So being defensive animals, initially, they're a bit apprehensive. Um, they don't like people because we're bigger than them. Of course. Um, and uh, they try and protect themselves. But, you know, get close and comfortable and let him know that you're comfortable and he's going to relax. Let's, let's talk about some of the snakes that we, we get here in the Western Cape. I mean, um, I know the mole snake, for example, is, is they, they, they get up to a really big size and, and can be quite intimidating for many people, including mm. myself. I almost stepped on one in uh, the West Coast National Park uh, and wasn't able to quickly identify what it was. So really script. Then I stood back, observed it for a bit and realized, oh, okay, it's only a mole snake. Um, how big do they get? And... Um, how, how fearful should we be of them? Well, it's quite interesting really because in the Western Cape, the, the, the mole snakes are found throughout South Africa, but they tend to be bigger than anywhere else. So anything up to about 2.4 meters. Uh, what's really beautiful is that they're born colorful and patterned, and then they phase out and they become sort of uh, brown, dark brown, and eventually black. Okay. And should we be afraid of them? The problem is people confuse them with other snakes, especially Cape Cobras. Yes. So rather err on the side of caution, rather until somebody identifies it as being a mole snake. Remember they're not venomous, they're constrictors, but boy can they bite. They've got 120 teeth in their mouths. Wow. Uh, yeah, with 120 teeth that look like fish hooks, um, they bite, they twist, you pull, you're going to end up going to the doctor, a few stitches and obviously antibiotics, anti tests. So it's a snake that will defensively bite. Okay. Um, they do hiss, they do warn you, they don't want to bite people. But uh, get too close for comfort. Fantastic imagery here in the studio as well. Carl Wacey has got one of these uh, beautiful pythons wrapped around his neck. Um, and just be careful though, because, well, it's not wrapped around it. It's in, in a scarf shape for the moment. Yeah. But wait till it realizes how small the prey is that it's actually <laughs> mine. <laughs> 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 We're going to continue this conversation. It's fascinating. And we want to find out more about uh, what action you should be taking as an individual. Uh, as well as the uh, the kind of um, well, numbers that you can call. If you sorry if I'm very distracted while I'm trying to talk here. This this uh, this Python is just beautiful. Um, as well as some contact details if you need assistance. Sometimes.